You and me were done traveling together. I want nothing more to do with you. I thought there was a chance you'd change. Fuck that. You can have your shit back. I don't need it or want it. You go your way, I'm going mine. And don't try looking for me. It was a mistake to show up in the Mojave in the first place. Let's deal.
Hercules. Welcome to the 188 Slop. Another satisfied customer. Back for more? Name's Michelle. My dad and me, we came here about a month ago. Give me a shot if you need anything. Back for more? You do know these old roads were not... There's more to the 188 than meets the eye. Troops, no shortage of customers. Not much. I hear some folks got killed down by Nelson. Or was it Novak? I don't know. No offense, but you look like you've traveled a long way down some bad roads. Where'd you come from? Huh. Well, in that case, I take it back. You look pretty good, given the circumstances. Well, welcome then. I'm Veronica. I live in a hole in the ground. Well, a bunker. But I'm not there. Yeah, I'm not worried. And actually these days... I had a run-in with this group calling themselves the Brotherhood of Steel. Well, that shouldn't be a problem for me. I can't afford anything like that. Hey. Just wherever the wind takes you, huh? I'll be honest. You're the first person I've run across out here that looks... There are places I've never been to that'd be too dangerous for just me. What do you think? Hmm. Good. That's the look I was going for. Trust me on this one, though. You'll be glad you brought me along. If I turn out to be a burden, we can part ways at any time. No hard feelings. Oh, nowhere in particular, really. Just hoping to see more of the world. Looking for a fresh perspective. I want to see how different groups have adapted to survive in the Mojave. See if there's something I can learn from. Like I said, they can handle themselves. And I'm not the only one getting supplies for them. Now you're talking. One thing you should know first, though. I ask you about the Brotherhood because I'm one of them. I know, I know. But I had to know how you react when I told you. We have made a lot of enemies. You still okay bringing me along? Sure, just don't ever ask me if your outfit makes you look fat. Well, thanks for taking a chance on a naive young girl from California with stars in her eyes and a pneumatic gauntlet on her hand. Let's hit the road, huh? Morning. A bunch of shut-ins who scorn outsiders and hold tick. over them. Gee, where have I heard that one before?
You're making me carry the heavy stuff, aren't you? Got something good for me? Is it a dress?
Glad to see you. Need a patch job? Oh, hell. What is it now? I've been here since the first push into Vegas. Back in the day, this camp was the hot spot for conflicts with the Legion, Raider tribes, you name it. These days, I spend most of my time trying to beat a little discipline into the soldiers under my command. I've gotten soft with no action. Mostly drill the troops, try to keep the discipline up and combat readiness high. It's not the easiest job in the world. Soldiers without a mission get bored very easily. Still, with the... Disappointed. We call them the misfits for a reason. The squad leader's got some promise. Kid named Mags. But as for the... I'm going to make them shape up if it kills me, though. You're welcome to try. Hell, maybe they'll... Man, it's my life. I joined up when I was 16. I don't know how to do anything else. Yeah, well, I didn't want... Smart move for the Kings to back down. They didn't know who they were messing with. We won't go quietly. The Legion can count on that. Y'all sure are a big ol' hero. I gotta write my mama and tell her I met you. To me? Well, I'll tell you what I think this squad needs. A little more basic human. Folks just don't talk to other folks. And I... That'd be swell. Only if they knew the idea came from me, they probably wouldn't take you seriously. And I sure hope you're more convincing than I. They're mostly pretty nice. Coindexter showed me how to make fireworks. Raz kind of scares me sometimes, but I don't mind. He's had a hard life. Well, I was born on a farm out in California. Didn't ever have no problems, really, except for some lean. Oh, it's a fine place. The lake is real pretty, and we don't get by. Well, as it turns out, we had a string of bad harvests a few years back. Pa said he as the biggest one, it was my job to go join the army so as my sisters could eat. It's all right, I guess. I don't like all the fighting we gotta do, though. I ain't scared. I just don't like hurting folks is all. Every day she told me that.
The Ranger vets are on their way from Baja. Never seen one before, but I heard they chew nails and spit napalm. You know, if you were serving, you'd probably be halfway to general by now. Oh shit, here comes the brown noser. What do you want? We don't talk too much, mostly. Poindexter's a smart-ass prick. Well, Hanrahan's a big pussy, ain't good for shit in a fight, and Mags... Well, Mags is cut out for something other than soldiering, you dig? Shit, maybe you're right. Guess I ought to give him a shot. Like I said, you get the juice, we'll cut loose. My man Jack at Red Rock Canyon got the goods. But listen, once you get folks dosed on Psycho, ain't a lot of... So if you got any other plans for bulking up the Misfits... Shit, man, it was this or the fiends. At least this way, the badasses with the top shelf guns are on. Ain't much to tell. Grew up out west in the boneyard. <laughs> yeah, not many people have. Wasn't really a good place for kids, you know. What do you want to know? Whole place used to be some kind of rich bastard resort. Now the rangers use the old resort, and we grunts get to live in. I'm not supposed to know this, but I hear they're dispatching elite ranger units from California to deal with the Legion. I guess I wanted to make something of myself, you know? Be the best of the best. I want... Easy. This is where they send all the fuck-ups and people they don't want. But hey... Yeah. I mean, no. They're okay people, but they... they're slacking... You really think so? Yeah, what about it? I told you we need marksmanship and explosive handling improvements. Are you sure? I've got enough clout to get them started, but these guys are pretty lazy. I'm assuming you aren't associated with the army or the rangers. What can I do for you? In a strictly official... However, as I am by far... Hmm, you're trying to appeal to my ego. But only be... As you wish. I'm... To what purpose? It's highly on... Suffice to say, I'm a certified genius, and when I'm discharged from this pit of testosterone and... F it's a simple idea. The army offers fiscal security and generous benefits at the cost of... If you perform too poorly, they'll scrub you out. All I have to do is... Wow, 
the big celebrity down here with the common trooper. Yeah, what about it? Are you near the box? Okay, everybody's lined up and... You heard the man, people. I've got the one at 11 o'clock. Raz, O'Hanrahan, take the two on the right. Poindexter, the center. Right. Exhale, squeeze. Focus on the shot. Thanks for the help. Y'all sure are a big old hero. I gotta write my... Boy, the squad sure is working together a lot better now. I think we're good. Doodle. Smart move for the Kings to back down. They didn't know who they were messing with. Hey. You can't help but notice that the Brotherhood barely exists to these people out here. We just don't adapt like we should. Used to be that all you needed to get your way was a suit of power armor and a laser rifle. Now, people are armed and organized. They're not afraid. I think you're right. We're getting desperate. Hardly enough people to sustain ourselves as a... But I get the feeling if I don't take matters into my own hands, the change won't come in time to make a difference. I like long walks in the desert and candlelit metal workshops. I like punching things, but sometimes shooting things just has to do. Yeah. I've been taking things apart and putting them back together since before I said my first word. You want to build something? Talk to me, and we can do it right there on the... Sp Who knows? I might even be able to show you a brotherhood... Step it.
See you around.
Ooh, got something good for me? <gasps> Is it a... Welcome, sir, or...
Got something good for me? Is it a dress?
What do you think of Mr. House? I was surprised he only had the two robot sex slaves. My... I want... a dress. Yeah, a good one. Something that's eye-catching and sexy, but all... I keep hoping I'll come across some old world designer gown when I'm scavenging, but... Hey, you try getting a date wearing scribe robes. I just like them, you know? They make you feel like a...
That chip of yours? Unless the dealer has a five or six showing. Nice! Can I order room service? Hey there, need anything? Things are getting stranger every day. Background? Been doing a lot of good work.
background. In the years before the Great War, Big Mountain had been the home to the brightest minds of the 21st century. Scientists of vision were drawn to the facility to tackle the greatest technological challenges of the era. They sought to create a new world, fueled by technology for the benefit of all mankind. Sonic emitters, space-age alloys, DNA hybridization, force field particle research, autodoc advances in cranial, cardiac, and trauma surgery. The hopes and dreams of a century became realities in the electronic forges of Big Mountain. The nucleus of this research was the dome. A huge stone facility that held the labs of every science known to man. It was a think tank where no problem could not be solved, where no question could not be answered. The Great War brought a new energy to Big Mountain and its scientists. Although sheltered from the front lines, the scientists waged their own war fighting their battles at the atomic level. Equations and calculations marched endlessly across chalkboards and computer terminals toward one solution, winning the war. For years, the minds and computers of Big Mountain were a blaze of trajectories, weapon schematics, and nuclear theories. The problems began to outpace the solutions, first geometrically, then exponentially. As the war escalated, so did the questions. 
On the night of October 23rd, 2077, the scientists received an answer that put all their questions to rest. In the aftermath, Big Mountain's silent experiments went to sleep, their creators slowly dying in the new world that had been left behind. And the great stone in the middle of the Big Empty lay untouched, filled with countless technological wonders. Wonders that, in the end, had been answers to the wrong question.
I thought I heard the pacification field kick in. All right, shh. Nobody move. I'll handle this. Be warned, intruder! You are in the presence of a mighty think tank of Big Mountain! The collective geniuses of... We! Why, Oppenheimer, which one of you self-professed geniuses has been adjusting my volume knob? Who was it? Was it you, Eight? Oh, Dr. O, was it? Likely story. Oh, couldn't spark two neurons if they were in a lattice of biomed gel. What? Me? Breaking news, Klein. It wasn't me, all right? I'm the robotical engineer. Eight is sound waves. That's his specialty. You always do this. You always demean me in front of guests. And it's not O, all right? It's... Enough! Either of you do it again, it'll be the last time. Now... Now... Great. Oh, I forgot what I was saying. What was I talking about? Did... Did it just say something? Anyone catch that? Boros, you work with animals. Translate. It's a lobotomite! Here, in the dome! Oh, as if this situation couldn't get any worse! Now we've got lobotomites! Dalla! Get the spray before it excretes all over everything! Dr. Klein, if my hypothesis is correct, this lobotomite is the repository of the brain we sent the signal to. The skin envelope once containing it. If so, it's proof that there may indeed be something beyond the crater. Just look at it. The way it blinks. It's like a big, hairless teddy bear. I know what it is, Dala. I want to know why it's down here. With its... its limbs all over everything. And... are those... Penises I see wriggling on its feet? Disgusting. I believe those are toes, Dr. Klein. Little teddy bear toes. Penises are much larger than those tiny extremities. Yeah, not that I would know. I don't recall the human penis ever being that large. It depends on one's own frame of reference, Dr. O. Look at its little nose with its two orifices for ingesting oxygen. Noses? By the great static, these lobotomites confound me with their sheer number of useless extremities. Now it's holding up an array of fully erect hand penises. If it tries to insert them, activate vivisectors. Dr. Clyde. Wait. I... I don't believe those gestures were random. Random at all. It's been following our conversation. The lobotomite understands us. I agree with Boros's histrionic findings. This little lobotomite is unusually attentive for something whose brain has been extracted. Nonsense! Lobotomites can't comprehend us! Eight, have you been in the Mentats again? If we slow down our oral processor receptors to understand this excretion, we'll all be rendered ignorant. All of you, power down, shut up, and let me prove once and for all how wrong you all are. As usual, Lobotomite, do you understand me? Can you speak? Those were words, weren't they? In the form of questions. It's asking me questions. Is this some kind of trick? Our efforts have turned against us. 
In playing God, we created a monster. Perhaps as we were ruthlessly lobotomizing it with our cutters, we filled the skin envelope with awareness. A teddy bear with new stuffing. Wait. If what you're theorizing is this lobotomite understands us, can reason with us, then this may be just the answer we've been looking for. At last, a chance to... Dr. Klein, a transmission from the Forbidden Zone, coming right at us. It can only be... If it isn't my old colleagues, the mighty think tank of Big Mountain. Big fools, all of you. It is I, Dr. Mobius, transmitting from my dome-shaped dome in the Forbidden Zone. A zone that is, yes, forbidden to you! Even now, my deadly robo-scorpions swarm across Big Mountain with their pincers and pointy laser tails. Soon, all science will be mine! Even the technology sealed in the Big Mountain Research Centers cannot save you. So cower in your think tank. Wait for the end. That's all. Uh, goodbye. Mobius. Always the same broadcast. He's clearly mad, driven insane by his flawed and imprecise kindergarten-level research methodology. What are we going to do? There's no way we can breach the Forbidden Zone. There's those robot scorpions everywhere. The Forbidden Zone, where no brain has ever entered, nor ever returned. Except Dr. Mobius, and the technologies that could save us. They are out of our reach. And Dr. Mobius mocks us. Did you see his cracked monitor? He's clearly let himself go. What? Ask the lobotomite for help? Hey, I think you need the fluid levels in your logic assist pumps checked. If this lobotomite responded, Dr. Klein, then it is clearly intelligent. Perhaps even displays heretofore unknown levels of helpfulness. But what if it's brain? We scooped that out. We don't even know where we left it. And for putting it back in, none of us have the knowledge. Yes, but it's still aware and responsive. Look at it. It's regarding us even now, with its big teddy bear eyes. If we ask it politely, and leave the part about the unnecessary, ruthless lobotomizing out, it might be favorably disposed to us. We removed your brain, yes, so soft, barely wrinkled, yet so flush with knowledge and experience. Brain extraction technology has been standard practice at Big Mountain for an immeasurable amount of time. Once the brain was out, then came the coils, the Tesla coils, the coils of Nikola Tesla. Yeah, eight, no need to brag. Wherever your brain is, it's transmitting thoughts to you through the, what, the, um, uh... The Tesla coils in its head! This is fortunate in many respects. If your brain was anywhere in the dome, why, you could access your aggression centers. Circumventing the pacification field, this is a no-no. We have never been in a fight. We do not want that. Reminds me of my days in American High. And Richie Marcus. Darla, was it necessary this time? I assume full responsibility. 
I take my duties in the prodding and excision of living, breathing tissue quite seriously. Although in truth, the Autodoc had done most of the work already. Quite industrious, almost cut into all my investigations. Once it had removed the brain and I misplaced it, other organs began to cry for direction, using your nerves as telegraph wires. Rather than let them send their signals, I removed them as well. Shh, little organs. Go to sleep in your tanks. Dala loves you. First was the heart. I mean, second was the heart. Brain was first. Third was the spine. Spine. Totally overrated, that arrangement of vertebrae. Look at me, with my lumbar and thoracic curvature. Never had a use for any of that. Spineless is what I prefer. To be correct, you should say, the Autodoc took out your brain. It did all the heavy lifting. It has never worked so hard before. It was unusual. It worked so hard on your surgery, it destroyed its own memory. How odd. I bet your brain remembers what happened. That autodoc junk heap was one of Mobius's creations, like the rest of the talking scrap metal in the attic. After that, the brain lost itself. Not in the metaphysical sense. Might have gotten flushed into one of the pipes. Actually, that's pretty likely. If so, it was flushed all the way to Mobius! Flush! That is the sound of flushing! Why, the Fisher of Rolando! Enough of this biological surgery talk! Lobotomite, listen to my voice. It denominates me to ask, but we need your help. In most probable of probabilities, our enemy, Mobius, has your brain. This is not good. He will most likely come after our brains next. We want you to stop him, somehow, with science. Yes, it is our only chance, a desperate plan that came to us after Mobius's first broadcast. Maybe, just maybe, if we reclaim these buried technologies, we can put an end to Mobius and the horrors spawning from the Forbidden Zone. The plan is very complicated. We are still calculating how it would work if it succeeded. That is our part of the plan. Excellent. This is turning out much better than the activate the retreat protocols and cower in my room idea I had earlier. Agreed. Oh, and I've used my robotical knowledge to, um, transmit the radio map waves to... Settle down, Eight. I would have gotten it in a second, all right? Eight transmitted the last known coordinates of the research centers. They, um... They, well, move sometimes, or get buried, or blow up. Eight is correct. All we need are the schematics. This does not mean we do not want the cold hard technology, however. So do not give in to your biological tired laziness and decide you would sweat too much carrying them. You have a new spine. Use it. And even if you die in the act of reclamation, simply reaching them will auto-transmitify the schematics to us. That is still good. For us. The 
Transmitter Technologies are the X2 Transmitter Antenna Array, used to focus coherent thought at excessively high frequencies. The psychoanalytic cardiac dampening sneaky stealth suit. A suit like nothing this world has ever heard, seen, or could ever see. And eight sonic sound wave emitter projecto gun. Able to broadcast sound at lethal frequencies. It also gives a great bio gel massage. There. We have informed you of all we need. We estimate if you are focused, your time investment will be minimal, uh, by our standards. If you work quickly, you will be the recipient of a gesture of gratitude from us. We do not bestow these old world gestures lightly. What illogic is this? Keep your filthy penis tit feet out of our labs and secrets! There are things here no lobotomite was meant to see. Things that would astound and possibly terrify. Terrify! Yeah, we don't come into your lab and decant your solutions. Only the magnificence of our monitors allow for true comprehension of the wonders of Big Mountain. Shield your jellied eyes, lest they burn from your skull. You would not dare. Perhaps I can change your mind, using the greatest of our sciences, the fence. The radar fence that surrounds the big mountain crater will prevent, uh, protect you from straying beyond the facility. The mighty radar fence protects us all. Get too close to the blinking posts and the proximity warning shall be your warning. You are too close. If you get near it, your vision will blur as the electrodes in your head shut off one by one. Click, click, click. Possible memory loss will occur, along with long-term nerve degradation. It is tied to not having a brain attached to your nervous system. But the nerve degradation is nothing to worry about. Such degradation would take many lifespans to become evident, and all biology dies. Such tiny inconveniences are less than the greater convenience and conveyance. You see, if rendered unconscious by the pylons, you will be returned to the sink, seemingly instantaneously, by your deadened perceptions. Out there? <laughs> oh, uh, Dr. Klein? Dr. Klein? If I may intersect for a moment. What is it? The lobotomite is asking me things, oh, and I'm trying to ignore them. My processors can't ignore you both at the same time. Well, you know how we asked it to fetch the sonic emitter thing? Turns out we already have it. <laughs> what are the odds? What is this, a high school science fair? Get your act together. You're making us look like a collection of round earthers. You're always yelling. My receptors can't take it anymore. And neither can my feelings! I am yelling because you contaminated specimens can't keep your probes off the volume knob on my voice module! It is truly the end of all intelligence when a lobotomite speaks more wisdom than you geniuses! So, if we have the sound wave, Sonic projecto thing gun, then what in Heisenberg's name do we need from X8? Anyone? I believe we need a new frequency embedded into the gun. It was designed to broadcast many sounds once charged. We just don't know the frequency. And it is lost in X8, just as X8 is forever lost to us. The sadness of my high school days. The sadness of my youth. My youth lost. Oh, really, Boros? 
All you needed in high school was Tommy Fink Tattletail and all the kids you hated, you little teacher's pet brown hound. Give the lobotomite the emitter. Does it have an audio effect frequency loaded? Oh, I don't think so. Wait. What is he doing? I think he's sonjaculating into the gun. Getting it warmed up. Ding. Turkey's done. You give it to the lobotomite. I'm not touching that thing. Oh, I don't think so. I'll do it if you two are going to be ashamed of your own technological needs. Let me give it a little sonic sterilization first. Ooh. All right. All antibacterial fresh. Here, my little teddy bear. I have thoroughly removed all Robco Terminate codes view from the device. It is clean, shiny, and ready for your hands. What did it say? Spit lead? What, like pencils? Oh, I think it wants a combustion pistol. A gun? Are you mad? We can't give it a gun! Guns kill! Leave big open holes in you that are like sores, but worse! Dr. Eight is correct. We already have given the teddy bear a lethal sonic death ray, filled with his sonic ejaculate and sterilized by my soft wing. Giving the teddy bear a gun would be the equivalent of following a glass of hemlock with an Abraxo chaser. Delicious and redundantly deadly. If you're going to bring the Socratic method into it, fine. Give the Lobato bear a combustion gun. Burroughs, don't you have something like that? Are you mad? We can't give it a gun. Guns? Wait, I said that already. Yes, I have the Cyberdog gun. With the little floppy metal ears and the curious nose sensor. Here. Fine. Done. That gun makes me uncomfortable anyway. Always worried it's going to hump my chassis. Anything else, lobotomite? Fine. Moros, more ammo. The good stuff. Top shelf ammunition. Let's see. Hollow point? That's worthless, but tasty. Oh, and here's some JFP. As if bullets need jackets. The JFP might make it ill and poop a lot, but when you're hungry, you're hungry. The sonic emitter should be sterilized and more than enough for you to encircle your warm hands around, cradling it gently with your finger muscles. Careful where you're pointing that. That device wasn't always a weapon. It was more like a force field kind of thing. Once. Force fields prevent us from moving. Forward or backward. They are irritating. The sonic emitter was specially designed to disable our own safety fields here in Big Mountain. When some of us lost our access passes, Dr. O... That only happened once! And I know you were behind still fielding my lab keys, Dalla. You formographer. Dr. O, you rewind that comment. Plenty of rewinding already going on in your formography tapes! Surprise that things don't snap out of their cases with repeated observations. Yes, but not currently. Yeah, we lost that part of the schematics. Or Boros did, in one of his stupid labs. Or inside one of his stupid pets. It is lost. All questions lead to this conclusion. The blue fields within Big Mountain shall be fielded with force forever. Fine, so 
Yes. Get these things for us. Do not attempt to comprehend their complicated schematics. That is for us to do. Well, good. What are the token words spoken in this case? Uh, thank you? Uh, yes. Thank you. Wait, is it leaving? Uh, but it ought to climb. The lobotomite will need rest, recuperation, things like that. I volunteer my chambers so it might be stared at. My monitor radar slowly scanning its form to collect sensitive data. No! That would put it too close to us. It could press buttons, turn lights on and off, and worse, let other lobotomites in. We could give it Mobius' old room. That's where its brain got scooped out anyway. And plus, some of its parts are already there. Might be more comforting for it to hang out with its spine and heart. Home is where the heart is, after all. <laughs> See what I did there? Went literal. I suppose. We'll have to move that couch out of there. Been putting that off too long. Eight says, let the lobotomite take the Sync Central Intelligence personality chip and reinstall it. That stuffy Mobius program Butler can walk the lobotomite, feed it, barter with it for us. It would also prevent it from going to Higgs Village and taking up residence there with my teddy bears. And it would be nice to have it so close. Your logic combined with my desire to keep the think tank lobotomite free has swayed me. Here, I present the Sync Central Intelligence. Lobotomite, take this chip to the sink. Plug it in and make sure the chip is clean or it could skip. Then make whatever crude biologic demands you need of the sink. It will cater to most of your hormonal whims. I cannot dispute your logic. Do we have objects to activate the chip's exchange routines? What? Like... stuff? Things? Yes. Things. I don't know. Might be some old Nuka-Cola or Sunset Sarsaparilla bottle caps lying around. It's not currency, per se. Still might be enough to trick the thing's trade routines. Mobius put that test line for caps in the code as a debug command, I think. I don't believe that was Mobius's reason. His wild speculation concerning post-Holocaust economic systems was quite extensive and of high decibel. Enough! Surrender these so-called bottle caps, Nuka and Sunset alike. In their role as things, they will serve as adequate test subjects. All right, all right, here, cap away. Hope that stupid ship chokes on them. Again, your logic is unassailable in its simplistic need. Oh? Fine. It's not going to help. That ship will probably refuse them anyway, as stuck up as it is. If I were not as intelligent as I am, I would feel as if perhaps I'm being tricked. Impossible. Oh. More. Why don't you make the lobotomite a bottle cap factory, Klein? Or better yet, give it a ton of things to activate the chip. Again, the logic of the request is clear. Tonnage is not needed, only adequate weight. Everyone, display your things. I do not understand, yet I am intrigued by this potential display. No, wait, you don't need to fill up the emitter again, really. Climb means things for trade. Display for trade. All right, let's consolidate. There's gotta be some junk around here. Magazines, useless, more camps, medicinal supplies, useless. Here.
Are there other chips? Are you echoing what he said, or are you asking for real? He's asking, yes. Dr. Klein, there are many other personalities. If you recall, you hurled them off the sink balcony after your argument with Mobius. It is not an argument if one is clearly right and the other is clearly wrong. I remember now. Yes, Lobotomite, there are other chips. If you want, find them. I believe they're stored on holotapes in many of our facilities. But you should stay out of those. No exploring and discovering things. The sink central intelligence should be enough for your <laughs> needs. Yes, you may need to wiggle it. There is no more we can do to aid you, and I Uh, if you're done, can we move again? My biogel's starting to crampagulate. Of course! Go land your science stations! Go! I am surrounded by children. Salutations and felicitations, sir, and a most jocund welcome to the sink. I am your electronic valet and household central processor. May I be of service, sir? Regrettably not, sir. All modules in this habitat are synthetic personalities atop a mundane operating system. There is no intelligence here, sir. Indeed, sir. Though if sir's aim is to activate them, I lament to inform sir that if sir were to ask my opinion, I should venture that sir is... However, if sir is determined to inflict upon sir's self their dubious services, sir might locate backup personality disks elsewhere in the facility. Tragically, the core operating systems are also located on the personality tapes, sir. Once the tape is installed, Sir may request I switch their dialectic interfaces off, and I shall oblige with great delectation. However, Sir will still be required to locate and install a backup holotape to access their functionality. As I am given to understand, Sir, this facility... He crafted the personality modules as part of a collection of experiments on the subject of machine-human interface. As to the reason for the unusual choices of devices to receive the modules, I cannot say. 
In addition to managing the personality matrices of the other household utilities, I can provide Sir with direct access to the commissary. Any goods Sir might require may be purchased through my shopkeep interface, whence tiny robots shall deliver them forthwith to this very domicile. Very good, Sir. And might I venture to opine that a new trilby might be just the thing to complete Sir's ensemble? Might I be of service, sir? Very good, sir.
life taken a turn? Do troubles beset you? Has fortune left you behind? If so, the Sierra Madre Casino, in all its glory, is inviting you to begin again. Come to a place where wealth, excitement, and intrigue await around every corner. Stroll along the winding streets of our beautiful resort. Make new friends, or rekindle old flames. Let your eyes take in the luxurious expanse of the open desert, under clear, starlit skies. Gaze straight on into the sunset from our villa rooftops. Countless diversions await. Gamble in our casino, take in the theater, or stay in one of our exclusive executive suites that will shelter you and cater to your every whim. So if life's worries have weighed you down, if you need an escape from your troubles, or if you just need an opportunity to begin again, join us. Let go and leave the world behind at the Sierra Madre Grand Opening this October. We'll be waiting. Has your life taken a turn? Do
is increasing geometrically. Do you hear me, Think Tank?
feel different, awake, alive for the first time ever. What is this strange new world around me? What does it hold in store for a dreamer such as myself? <laughs>
just by showing you that same bright who turned you down for the high school dance so you could smoke with Richie Marcus. All monitors will also be vigilant. Step outside during class and they'll make sure you make a speedy jump back to your desk. Hold your urine and wait for the proper bathroom break time.
down at the end of the hall is all storage for just Stand by. Area secure.
Two equals harassing the head of a forbidden idiots of the think tank.
is the pre-recorded voice of your pre-recorded principal, Dr. Principal Boros. Attention students, this is the pre-recorded voice of your pre-recorded principal, Dr. Principal Boros. School is a sacred trust. Even though I am a long ago graduate of this hated facility, now I see its worth and see it was corrupted by fraternities. And girls, yuck.
Today, the cafeteria will be serving nothing, because I didn't build one. No cafeteria, no bathrooms, no swirlies, no chocolate pudding left in the chairs of brilliant minds. What are you going to do now, Richie Marcus? What terrors does Big Mountain hold for the intrepid seeker? Really? Does anyone know? I am at a loss.
Do not approach the pylons. Pylons are the glowing things. Also, do not approach a fallen pylon. If you see a fallen pylon, call security.
Dr. Mobius, surrender yourself. You cannot win despite the fact that the odds are heavily in your favor.
Might I be of service, sir? Very good, sir. Might I be of service? Might I be of service, sir?